And before we start with theorems, let's look at the circle over here. So they've given us O, which is our center. And O is usually the center. But you need to look at your statement for confirmation. So if they draw a line from the circumference passing through the center to the other end of the circumference, we call this line the diameter. Now, if they draw a line from the center to the circumference, like the line OC here, we call that line the radius. Now, if they draw a line from the one end of the circumference without passing through the center to the other end of the circumference, we call that line a chord. If they draw a line that's outside the circle but touches it at one point, we call that line a tangent. If they draw a line that comes from outside of the circle and passes throughout the circle, as we see here, in a way that it touches it at two points, we call this line the secant. Now it's very important to know this, as well as segments, and please refer to your books to find out what segments are, so try to check them in your textbooks. Now it's very important to know the theorems, but it's mostly important to know where there aren't any theorems than theorems. When you know the theorems, then you'll be able to know where it applies and doesn't apply. Now I'll show you where the theorem applies and what it is, and also when to know if there isn't a theorem. Even if a shape may seem to be related to a specific theorem you know, it could be non-existent because of certain reasons. Okay, so there's a theorem here where a line that's drawn from the center to the chord, when it gets to the chord, it becomes perpendicular. That line bisects the chord or separates it into two equal parts. So when the line is drawn from the center and becomes perpendicular, it will bisect or separate into two equal parts. And that line has to be a chord. So now our chord AC has been bisected into two equal parts where line AB is equal to line BC. Now the application of this theorem largely involves the theorem of Pythagoras. For example, let's assume we extend the line O to the circumference and it becomes line OD and continue to extend the line from D to C and now we have line DC. Now notice that we have a right angled triangle. Triangle BDC is a right angled triangle and so the theorem of Pythagoras applies here. And again if we join a line from A to O or vice versa, we're still going to get a right angle triangle, which will be OAB, triangle OAB. Remember that since B is 90 degrees, triangle BDC, same applies on the triangle OAB, since both these angles are on a straight line. Remember that angle B is 90 degrees on the triangle BDC, same applies on the triangle OAB, since both these angles are on a straight line. So in your question, you might get two units as your radius and get the chord AC as six units. And then they'll ask you to find the length for DC. Now here's the conclusion you could come up with. You can pause the video to let it soak in for a while if you like. What you could do since you're given six units, AC is six units as your chord, and the radius as two units, and this is line OA, you will conclude that OD is two units since OA is our given radius. We know this because radius lines are equal on the same circle. Another way to look at it is that since AC is six units, AB, which is half of AC, will be three units. BC will be three units. Remember that AC is bisected. 
Now, in triangle AOB, we're able to solve OB using the theorem of Pythagoras. We have the hypotenuse OA, which is two units. We have the, we have the horizontal side X or AB, which is three units. And we want our vertical side OB or Y. Now, when you figured out OB, you can simply add it to OD, our radius, and get the side BD. Remember, you've got the side BC as well as side BD to determine side DC, our hypotenuse, in the triangle BDC, using the Pythagoras theorem, since BDC is a right-angled triangle.